Well, many are calling this a miracle. The man rescued after spending nearly a week trapped in his wrecked truck is improving at Memorial Hospital in South Bend. And tonight we are hearing the first 911 call made by those good Samaritans who found him. I don't know the law of the address, but there's a car that's been here since Wednesday, and there's a person inside of it. He's He's still alive, too. It's a miraculous discovery inside the truck is Matthew Ream. He went airborne and rolled off the Interstate 94 bridge in Portage County. He survived inside the wreckage for six days, completely undetected, out of view from those passing by. Dude, that's crazy. I came down here to check for fishing, and he's down here in the car. On the phone is Navardo Delatori, alongside his father-in-law, Mario Garcia. The two men were out looking for fishing holes at a creek in northwest Indiana. The pair saw something shiny in the distance and got closer to see what it was. You guys might need the jaws of life to open the doors. His truck's pretty wrecked. He was going westbound, trying to hit the guardrail on the opposite end of the bridge and ended up down here. Reem had a phone with him, but the truck was so mangled that he couldn't reach it, and he was severely injured. He said he can't feel his leg. Temps fell to 29 degrees in Porter County during the days Reem was all alone. Indiana State Police say he drank rainwater, and that helped him to survive. And even more miraculous, you see this picture from Reem at his hospital bed. His condition has been upgraded from critical to serious. Thank you. Migrants continue to make their way to Chicago by the bus load, but because of recent crackdowns by City Hall, they are now arriving here via the suburbs. Thank you. All. After Mayor Johnson ordered buses that don't follow protocol to be impounded and fined in the city, more and more buses are dodging the issue by doing their drop-offs in the suburbs. Over the holiday weekend, two buses brought 91 migrants to a metro stop in Elmhurst. In Fox River Grove, at least 38 migrants were dropped off over the weekend and reportedly told that they were in Chicago. Police provided a warming shelter until a train arrived to the city. For months, the standard drop-off point has been a designated landing zone on the near west side. But with fines and penalties now in place, the dynamic has shifted with charter buses taking the tack of dropping migrants in the suburbs near public transportation. Currently, about 300 migrants are waiting to be placed in shelters in Chicago, but that is a quickly changing number with local officials largely in the dark about where or when buses will be popping up in the suburbs. The Kane County Republican Party released a statement demanding that more municipalities pass restrictive ordinances that would make it harder for buses to make unannounced drop-offs, saying in part, this exploitation must end now. Our neighborhoods are turning into battlegrounds because of these policies. Elburn, Elgin, Aurora, all under attack without warning. And we did look into earlier social media reports that migrants were also dropped off in Glen Ellen. Police there could not confirm that. Meantime, a group of medical advocates, they are sounding the alarm. We welcome you to Fox Chicago. Yeah, thank you very yeah. much. Yeah, I used to work for Fox in New York City before I came to Chicago. And uh, what I got to ask you is, what took you so long to get me back? Yeah, right. <laughs> right. Well, we're certainly glad to hear it. I think you're a perfect really? fit for this uh, television station. And I don't. Not only do I mean that as a friend, but also as a, one professional to another. I'm really glad. Thank to Thank you, and I'm looking forward to working with all of you. You're all such a great professional group great. of people. Welcome. And get back to work. That's all right. All uphill from here. <laughs> thank goodness we held onto that VHS tape. <laughs> You've seen this face greeting you for years on Fox 32. She not only made your day better, she made my day better. She always made everybody's day better. Anita Padilla, and we are back together for a big announcement, a bittersweet announcement this morning. It is great to see you, my friend. <laughs> Thank you. I'm looking at that video, and I just said, see what morning shows do to you over the time? Like, what happens to you? <laughs> Stress and morning shows. You know, Scott, thank you so much. I, This is really special, and it kind of bittersweet. Sweet, you know, it is but not kind of. It is. It, it is. It is. And you know, I, I got to say that you know, my husband and I were embarking on a new journey here, um, and you know, with my husband being newly retired from the attorney general's office of investigation, and my son Seth off to college, it's really time to see you know what 2024 is going to bring, and. Of course, if you all want to keep in touch with me, because I am making the announcement, this is my last day, reach out to me on my social media. You all know that I'm always on social media. You, you, no. know, you can't keep me all day <laughs> during the show and everything. But it really has been my honor and my privilege 
to report for Chicago for 25 years. And, um, you know, this is one of those days that's really going to be seared into my memory because it really is an end of a chapter. And it's the beginning of a new journey for me, which I'm really excited about. I, you know, I can't talk about that right now, about all the things that I'm going to be doing or I want to do um, and going to pursue. But it was a decision that I didn't take lightly. You know, I had a lot of conversations with God and my family about this decision. And um, like I said, I'm not really ready to talk about what's in store for me. But I will tell you that, you know, life has all kinds of changes. And you, you've got to know, you know, and, and pay attention. And I just felt in my spirit after many conversations with God, that, you know, it was time to do something new, which I'm really looking forward to. But I want people to understand that this company has been very good to me. You know, one of the reasons I came from that other TV station in town, which shall not be named. No idea what you're talking uh, about. Yeah, that other TV station, you know, it was because I had worked for Fox and I wanted to come back and tell stories the way I like to tell stories because there are so many people in this city that have great stories to tell. and. Uh, and to be able to tell them with such, you know, with feeling and heart, uh, this company allowed me to do that. And so I'm going to miss that part of it. I won't miss the alarm clock, as you all know. <laughs> but, you know, but it is going to be it is going to be different. And again, follow me on my social media pages. Before I became your work husband, you had another work husband by the name of Gary. And he <laughs> was supposed to be sitting in the chair that Mike is sitting in, but he's a little under the weather. Oh, he is? But he, oh, Gary. he wouldn't let you Gary. leave. Leave this studio without, of course, you know, he had to put his input in. So he left you a video message. Can we play that? Anita, I had every intention of coming downtown today to surprise you on your send off party and tribute. But unfortunately, I woke up at about one this morning and felt like I was rolled over by one of our news trucks. I don't know if it's COVID, RSV, or whatever, the flu, but I thought it better that I just send a little note in and not come in and contaminate everybody in the studio. Can't believe you're leaving the station after how many years, it's amazing. I was blessed to work with you for about four or five years. Back in the late, uh, we started, I think, probably around 2015 all the way up to 2017 or 18 or 19 when you got bumped up to the big show to be a morning news anchor. We had so many great times. You are the pit bull of morning news. That was your style. You were, once you got a tip or a, on a story, you wouldn't let go until you found out everything you could. And we started uh, something unique way back when. We, uh, you started doing live Facebook podcast or broadcasts. We didn't, they weren't podcasts. That wasn't invented yet. We would just be, you'd be doing a live Facebook from the truck. And I got to be the crotchety old guy that sat in the back and chimed in whenever we wanted. And we made a little name for ourselves. We had a lot of fun with stories and just delving into all kinds of stuff. After all, we found out just by me questioning you, what happened on your prom night? We won't go into that though. But anyway, we had it. Uh, it was just an amazing run. It wasn't like work working with you. It was always enjoyable. We had fun. Um, my best memory isn't actually even a news story with you. Um, we were getting ready. We were down in the parking garage, walking to the truck, and uh, you had just grabbed the handle of the door, passenger door. And when you pulled, all of a sudden, a rat jumps off the roof of the truck right past your head. And you screamed. You did a backflip, round off, and ran faster than I ever saw anybody. Simone Biles would be jealous to be able to do what you did that morning. But that was one of my favorite memories with you. And I'm sorely going to miss seeing you on air, miss you being close by. And just remember, you always leave a big spot in our hearts with you. So good luck and uh, great, great future with you and your family with whatever you do next. Take care. Love you, darling. 
<laughs> oh my God, Gary, wow. thank you so much. That day, the rat, I, I knew he was gonna tell that story. I remember that day. Oh, they heard me, and I, I was on the phone with the newsroom, and they heard me screaming, and they're like, what happened? Somebody's attacking you. I'm like, no, it's a rat. <laughs> and there were days. And we don't have rats in our garage, which that freaked me out. How did he get on the truck? There were days, correct me if I'm wrong, where your Facebook Lives would get more viewers than Good Day Chicago it did. it did. People yeah. were tuning in to watch that crazy conversation, and Gary would get yelled at by the fans, and then he would be arguing with the fans, and it was a great... Uh, conversation and we talked about a lot of stuff that you know that you can't really even talk about now and that is I think uh, was interesting too we had a lot of really deep good conversations but his description of you as being the pit bull of you know of reporters that is true I it mean, is you, true I will say that would, <laughs> and you remember this we'd be sitting uh, some breaking news would happen on our show and Anita's got 74 people on speed right. dial that she's calling there right. from the anchor desk During Facebook tracking, Live. Down, tracking down the stories and, and getting us interviews at the last minute 25 years doing this I've, I've never had a co-anchor that could actually report from the desk like Anita Padilla mm. and and you know that brings me to my next point um you know you're a local girl and and, and I'm, I'm, you and I started here about the same time. Like the exact same day? Yeah, we're coming up on our eight-year anniversary, and, and this is not hyperbole. I, to this day, I get stopped on the street, and it's, oh, hey, you work for Fox 32. You work with Anita Padilla and Mike <laughs> Kaplan. And that, that, <laughs> that is the number one reaction from people. And I would imagine, Anita, that for you, uh, that uh, this has been a touchstone for you, being able to, to work in the community where you grew up. Yeah, you know, the Chicago is always going to be home. My family is here. Um, you Your know, picture's on the mural on Genesee. Right, yeah. right. Well, yeah, that's, that's <laughs> wild, too. Um, but, yeah, this, this is, um, you know, I go to the grocery store and people, even during COVID, COVID, you know, I had a mask on. People like, uh, you're that lady on the news. Your voice sounds so familiar. And it's like, you really, I have no makeup on. And I thought I was incognito. <laughs> they still figured out who I was. And I, I just, I think that just goes to um, the fact that I, you know, I, I'm a real person. Just the person you see on TV is the person that I am in person every single day. I'm not a different person on TV. Well, when they asked me what kind of video we, we wanted to look at, I did specifically ask for the pandemic. And you know, you and I anchored together for almost six years, and I, I cherish the time we had together. Oh, yeah. But when I, forever, when I look back on the pandemic, I will think about those days, and, and you and I were side by side in this studio, for a lot of it separated for obvious reasons. Right. But I'll never forget, Anita, driving in to a city that was a ghost town every right. day. It was so surreal. It was so surreal. You and I, you know, not knowing what was going to come on any given day, um, it, it, was, it was such a strange feeling for me, but I was so glad to have you to lean on during what was two years unlike we'd ever experienced in our lifetimes. Well, that was just a while. And you were even working from home. I was working during from the home. Time. Yeah, and yeah. Scott and I, were, um, Sylvia and uh, Terrence and uh, Roseanne, we came in every day, and it was the craziest time. And if you all remember, it, you know, I wouldn't I, really, I mean, being with Scott, it, it, we really worked together then, and it was so good. I'm so glad I had you as a partner. Not only did we deal with the pandemic, then we had the George Floyd riots. And there was so much news oh, to gosh, consume, yeah. like in the evening, and everything was changing, and you didn't, you wanted to get it right. And then I'm not African American, he is not African American, and we're walking a razor's edge on all these very touchy subjects. And I think that's what I think management forget, forgot, and I had to remind them. It was just so tough for us because you didn't want to say the wrong thing and offend anybody. And everybody was so touchy. You know, you're this, you're that, you're. You know, and what I want to say is there's a lot of division in our country. You're red, you're, you're bl blue, you're black, you're white, you're, you know, you're, you're vax or not vax. It, it, it's ridiculous. Division is, is unnecessary. We all got to learn to love each other. You know, and I think that that is the key. We, well, we have to love. And I'll also say for me personally, uh, and again, I've been here for eight years, um, uh, we, we were moved, you and I, to the earlier hours, uh, and I had never experienced anything like that, getting up at, in the middle of the night, uh, which it took some getting used to, but I think that time was very special as well, because I think the three of us really bonded. Oh, that yeah. 4 a.m. shift uh, was nothing like I had ever experienced, but oh. I, I really thought that was a, a special time for the I three of us. I thought so, too. We oh, let it absolutely, fly. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> that early in the morning, you've got to have, you know, that camaraderie going to get you through it, and, you know, you certainly... We, we call you Mama Bear. We do. You know, and, and that's, that's well-earned and well-deserved.
So when looking back, uh, you know, not only the, the 16, almost, se almost 17 years here at Fox 32, but your time in Chicago, uh, how, how do you sort of encapsulate it all? God, I, I just think it's um, a, a real special news town. I think this is a city that uh, loves their news people. They, they breathe and eat you know, news people, their news people are so important to them in Chicago, unlike any other city. New York has the stars and they've got Broadway and they've got, you know, famous people everywhere. L.A. is its own thing. But in Chicago, the news people are the celebrities along with the sports people. That is how important it is. And it's so important to be able to connect with the viewers through this television. You allow us to talk to you. You allow us to come into your home every single day. And it's an honor. It really is an honor to be able to uh, ha have been able to do news in Chicago for 25 years, 16 of it right here at Fox. Well, I mean, you were at WXLC on Belvedere Road, were you? For, you, know, you know, starting out, you know, radio back when you were eight years old. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when they told me my voice was all weird and I had to, then I had to work on my voice and that's a whole other story. Well, right. you worked on it just fine. It's, <laughs> look where you ended up. There yeah. you are, right. Yeah. Look at me now. <laughs> what do you think about those days uh, with when she first came on board, Good Day Chicago? What stands out in your mind? Well, we were very familiar with how fantastic her reporting was and it's like, you know, nobody does it better and we all you know we're watching all your Facebook stuff and you brought a real sense uh, you, you you mentioned yourself you are who you are you come on there is no pretentiousness at all we see Anita Padilla the same Anita Padilla that I'm sure your family is seeing at home and that just reality uh, comes through you're so natural in that chair uh, and, and that makes you the success that you are thank you and I Scott thanks for putting up with me because Scott is buttoned up he, he's, <laughs> everything is right on time with Scott and Anita comes running in the studio and I'm just, you know, the tornado coming in. And I used to drive him crazy, but he learned to no, love I, me, didn't you? I know I did. You know what? We were oh, I, look from at all the start. Nice yeah. Come on in. We've spared no expense. Oh my God. Cupcakes for Padilla. Oh, thank you guys. That's so nice. And as they're handing you this, I just want to say, you know, I've I've had several co-anchors over my career and, and I, I've never had someone I felt so comfortable with from the very beginning. It's been my honor and my pleasure to work with you. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much, Chicago. And thanks for letting me be a part of this uh, wonderful city and this wonderful team right here. We still have a few seconds. Uh, you guys? We are going to miss you. Yeah. We are really going to miss yeah. you. You've meant a lot to us. And always, when you first thing the more you come in, she's always in a great mood, isn't she? She like, always says hello to every mm -hmm. person yeah. in her path. Yeah. You're I'm very, tired, but I'm staying high. <laughs> A ray of sunshine. We will miss you, Anita Padilla. Yeah. Thank you, like guys. you said, you're 100% genuine, and I'm going to miss the stories of Tom and Seth and uh, everything. Oh, my God. Yeah. And the phone in the calls in, in the commercials, <laughs> right? <laughs> Hers and mine. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Anita. Thank you. <laughs> And a massive presence of law enforcement and paramedics today in a southwest suburban community. Don't worry, though. This was all part of a drill simulating a school shooting in Lyons. Fox 32's Dane Placco reports that officers and EMTs, they hope after today they are prepared for the worst in case it happens. With students gone for the holidays, police and fire officials here at Lyons are conducting a school shooting drill, a full-scale drill designed, as you can see, to be as lifelike as possible. So treat this as a real-life event, please, or you will get nothing out of this. Dozens of police officers and paramedics from Lyons and five surrounding communities are taking part this afternoon in an active shooter scenario at the George Washington School on Ogden Avenue. After initial training on how to clear a classroom, the drill began with a call on the police radio. Officers staged outside the school were instructed to get inside as quickly as possible, bypassing cries of help from injured victims to focus on the sound of gunshots and getting the shooter. This lifelike drill comes in the wake of last year's school shooting in Uvalde, Texas, where police were criticized for waiting more than a half hour to go into the school. Yeah, that has, has definitely been uh, a point of contention for law enforcement where 
you cannot sit back any longer and wait. You have to go in because the individuals that are in there are continuing to, to shoot or maim or harm or kill individuals that are in the building. The Uvalde situation, uh, not to judge another police department, but those officers need to go in immediately. They did not do that. As the drill progressed, police located and killed the gunman, but not before more than a dozen officers and students and teachers had been shot. With the scene still active, paramedics rushed into the school to begin triaging and evacuating those who'd been injured. Moving. Unfortunately, mass shootings have become commonplace in America, and uh, it's imperative that our police departments, our fire departments, know how to respond. Leaders of the local law enforcement agencies and the Cook County Sheriff's Police followed the response inside the school, taking notes on its effectiveness. I saw some things that I thought were outstanding, and there were some mistakes that will be addressed. Uh, but that's in any of these, even in a real situation, uh, an active shooter and all the ones we've been involved with. We address that afterwards, too. There's things we could do better. Once this drill is over, they'll gather in the classrooms here at the school to talk about what went right, what went wrong, to make sure that if it ever happens for real here, they're ready for it. In Lyons, Dane Placco, Fox 32, Chicago. Very much legal trouble for Alana men's basketball star Terrence Shannon Jr. right now. He is facing serious charges. He's now suspended from the team. Elizabeth Matthews has the details. A big distraction at tonight's U of I men's basketball game. The athletic director is expected to address rape charges against one of their star players. Terrence Shannon Jr. turned himself into police in Kansas this week, posted a $50,000 bond and was released. The rape allegations stem from a September incident when Shannon traveled to Lawrence to watch the Illini football team take on Kansas. 23-year-old Shannon has been suspended now from all team activities effective immediately. The Chicago native is in his second year of U of I after three years at Texas Tech. U of I Athletic Director Josh Whitman says in a statement, quote, the University and Division of Intercollegiate Athletics have shown time and again that we have zero tolerance for sexual misconduct. At the same time, DIA policy affords student athletes appropriate levels of due process based on the nature and severity of the allegations. Now, ESPN is reporting that Shannon's attorney says in a statement that they have been cooperating with this investigation, claims that his client is, is innocent and says that they will take this to trial if need be. Reporting Elizabeth Matthews, Fox 32, Chicago. A woman is under arrest tonight for allegedly writing anti-Semitic graffiti on a Rogers Park business. Police say they were called to North Sheridan Road while the alleged vandalism was happening. She allegedly used a black marker to deface a window. Police arrested the suspect a few blocks away. Okay. After a suburban man was arrested in the shooting death of his own mother, 21-year-old Justin Holman of Plainfield allegedly told police <coughs> that he got into an argument with his mother last week about a life insurance policy that was taken out in his name. He allegedly admitted that he killed her because he was scared for his life. A judge has denied pretrial release. A car reported